Welcome back to the Arkansas A&M Black Bears Dynasty on NCAA Football 14, guys, a.k.a. College Football Revamped. And what a season our Black Bears had. Your national champions, 14-0. and Honestly, I couldn't be any more prouder of this team. The way they performed this season uh, was just remarkable. A lot of great talent on this team. Uh, and a lot of these guys will be back next season, hopefully. But in today's video, we'll take a look back at the season, go over the season stats, look at the final standings. Uh, we'll take a look at All-Americans, award winners, and we'll look at recruiting and get ready for a great offseason. So let's look back at the season, man, and domination has to be the word. It started against our rival, Arkansas, blowing them out the water 70 to 35. Then we took on Notre Dame and we handled business. Like this was probably the best game that we played all season. This Notre Dame game and then the Texas game at the end of the season. Uh, the Texas Tech game, we won that big. We beat Baylor. And then a tough stretch of games here. Uh, the TCU game, we won without a doubt. A State, we won, no worries. But then we took on Nebraska, only won by eight, had to come back from behind to win that game. Same in the Auburn game, only won by five points. And then we went to overtime against Texas A&M. Uh, I feel like the team finally woke up after this, that stretch of games. Those three, the, those three games really put the season in perspective for the squad, and they went on a tear after that, dominating Iowa State, blowing uh, K-State out the water, getting the first shutout in school history, uh, beating Kansas, Going into the Big 12 championship, beating a Texas team that was pretty good, and then winning the national championship versus Bama. Uh, you know, we put up a lot of points. This offense was lights out this year. Uh, Craig Washington, uh, you know, Ira Harris, uh, Philip Fagan at the end of the year, Trey Morgan, Will Johnson. Uh, offensive quarter, coordinator Lincoln Riley did a great job with this, this group. Uh, I, I, I have a strange feeling that we're going to end up losing Lincoln to a head coaching job just because of the numbers he was able to put up with this offense. He better get a head coaching job. Uh, on the defense side of the ball, though, we've got a lot of work to do. We're losing a lot of key players uh, at key positions, Kyle Butler, Corey Mark. Uh, I think Jason Harris might declare. So uh, a lot of these guys, a lot of the defensive guys won't be back. We're losing three defensive tackles. Uh, so we're going to be young on the defensive line again, especially up the middle. But I like the group that we have. Uh, I mean, here's a look at just the program uh, in the past eight seasons, man. We're 69 and 35 overall. We've got five bowl wins. Uh, we have three straight Big 12 championships, five conference champions all together, a national championship. Uh, we won 14 in a row this season, 27 in a row if you go back to last season. Um, it's just this the the upward climb of this team uh, has been unreal. And Coach Thomas, we have to take our hats off to him, man. The way he's built this program, he's going to go down. He has to go down as one of the best coaches in college football history. But let's take a look back at the season that was and the amazing numbers this offense put up. Craig Washington, our redshirt sophomore uh, quarterback, the leader of this team, man, uh, he got better his sophomore year. You remember he started his freshman year, put up some amazing numbers, but look at the growth. 4,984 yards in his sophomore campaign. 38 touchdowns with 16 interceptions. Uh, 356 yards through the air. Completed 72% of his balls. Uh, you know, after you know, Corey Gonzalez graduated, uh, I felt like Lincoln Riley handed Craig the offense and said, this is yours. Do what you do and lead us to the championship, and that's what he did, man. And don't sleep on him; he can run on, on he can run the ball too. Uh, he has 624 yards on the ground with 14 touchdowns. He is a the definition of a dual back or dual quarterback. Uh, you know, I was impressed with the way he threw the ball this year. Uh, he only had 100 incompletions through 14 games. That is insane. That is insane. He broke the school record for passing yards in the season, touchdowns in the season. Uh, completion percentage, QB rating uh, is off the charts. That's actually an NCAA record right there. Uh, you know, hopefully he's back for his junior year. He can declare, uh, and I'm hoping that he doesn't. I really want him to come back. 
uh, and he deserves to win a Heisman Trophy. I feel like he was the best player in college football this year, uh, but because he had a yeah, not-so-good game against Texas in the Big 12 championship, it cost him the, the Heisman Trophy. On the ground, uh, you know, I think this year we kind of miss Corey Gonzalez. Uh, I think the two backs did a great job filling in for him, though. Ira Harris uh, led the team in rushing 1,231 yards with 23 touchdowns, but we learned that Ira is not an every-down back. He is definitely a, a specialty back, uh, somebody who's going to get you explosive plays, uh, who can come out of the backfield and make a catch, but he's not going to be the up-the-gut runner that we're looking for. But that's where Philip Fagan came in. You know, later in the season, we gave Phil a chance to start, and he really took advantage of it. Uh, he finished with 1,125 yards, and he also had 23 touchdowns. The crazy part is, man, this man averaged seven yards per carry. I'm hoping both of these guys come back and uh, they have – another chance to go over a thousand yards. I really think that Ira can come back and be, do something special, man. I think he could be our, our version of Reggie Bush, but we also have another back that is going to be looking for playing time next year. That's Anthony Bryant. Uh, he's going coming back for his sophomore year. Uh, he got a start in the big 12 championship and really showed what he could do. Now he is the definition of a power back. He's going to get you that, those, those short yards, uh, so we might have a three running back rotation next year uh, with Harris on like outside runs, Fagan, you know, up the middle and then Brian on the shorter runs like at the goal line. So uh, it should be an interesting offseason to see what we can do with these backs. Uh, we also have another back that will be coming off a red shirt. He's a red shirt junior. He's more of a speedster. Uh, he might get more time in a return game, but we'll look at the roster later. Out wide, Trey Morgan led the way, 72 grass for 1,260 yards and nine touchdowns. I feel like Trey Morgan should go to the NFL this year. He has really separated himself as one of the nation's top wide receivers. Just look at his, like, ascension uh, since he came on campus. He has been a great weapon for this offense. I would hate to lose him, but I think there's not too much more that he can do. Uh, he could win a Bolitnikoff next year. I'm sure he'll be one of the top candidates. Um, but this dude is just a great receiver. Um, you know, he led this group. Will Johnson was second on the team, 54 grabs for 1,064 and 11 scores. He's a senior, uh, and he'll be, he'll be graduating this year. Uh, I, we moved Will inside to play slot this year, and I think that was the best move for him. Uh, he's more fit to play that role. And I think in the next level, he could be a great uh, slot receiver in the NFL. Big play, Richie Carroll. 36 grabs, 921, 11 scores. Really tried to get him to his 1,000 yards. Uh, but, again, down the stretch, Richie was our guy. If we needed a big play, we went to number 11. Uh, again, we he started off in the slot in his career. His senior year, we moved him outside, and he shined. He shined. The catches, the – Receptions were down this year, but the yards went up. Uh, the receiving yard, the receiving touchdowns uh, were the same as his junior year. But man, what what a career he had here at AM. Uh, he's definitely going to be missed. Those big plays down the stretch uh, really helped us out. Then you got Tariq Larson, uh, the speedster, the junior, thirty catches, seven thirty nine, five scores. Next year he's going to have a much bigger role. Uh, I'm thinking that he's going to be playing our slot uh, for sure. Uh, you know, he had more. He had the most yards receiving in his career this year than any other year on campus. Uh, also the most touchdowns. I just feel like you get the ball in this kid's hand. He's just going to be dynamic. 98 speed, 97 acceleration. Um, again, I think, you know, going into his senior year, put him in the, in the slot and just let him go to work. Will Rogers, 25 grabs, 408 and a touchdown. He did a great job uh, playing tight end for us. Uh, he'll be back for his junior year. I think he's just getting better. He's starting to figure out the position a lot more, um, and we're excited to see what he can do. Now, we do have a tight end that we did go recruit, and I think he's going to be something special. But Will is one of those weapons, man, where if you get him the ball, he's going to be able to make plays. Ira had 20 catches for 205. DT, Donald Thomas, nine catches, 245 at a touchdown. Uh, Adam Lawson had eight for 170. Then you have Fred Foreman, six for 101 and two scores. Uh, Fagan out of the backfield, three for 19. Uh, James Alexander, two for 38 and a score. Uh, Anthony Bryant had two for 14. And then Patrick Cook had one for 12. Uh, again, we'll take a look at the roster again. We're going to be stacked at wide receiver next season. 
to the offensive line we go. Proud of these boys, man. They did a great job. We lost four starters last year uh, to graduation, and we are very young on the offensive line. Uh, in fact, we have a freshman guard, Drew White, who started, and he led the team in pancakes with nine, but he did give up two sacks. Uh, Keith Smith at right guard, seven pancakes with three sacks. Uh, Curtis Maynard, four pancakes, two sacks. Uh, Alfred Robinson, the true freshman, he got some playing time. He had four pancakes. Uh, Will Horn out at left tackle, three pancakes, and he gave up three sacks. Ty uh, Tyrone, Tyrone McMillan got three pancakes at center. Hawkins got two pancakes and two sacks. Uh, and then the rest of the guys down the line. Uh, again, this this group is young still, but they did an awesome job. They did a great job run blocking. Uh, they did a great job keeping Craig upright for most of the year. Um, again, they're going to grow together. They're going to keep growing. We don't have anybody graduating this year, so that's a good thing. So the whole offensive line will be back uh, for next season. To the defense side of the ball, we go. Brian Jones led this team with 81 tackles in his junior campaign. Again, the best thing that we did for Brian was kick him inside to play middle linebacker. Uh, we had him on the outside starting off. But as soon as he took over that middle linebacker position, he shined uh, 81 tackles. He had an interception, deflected six balls, forced a fumble. Uh, just a great all-around player. Next season, if he decides to come back, we got to work on his speed. We got to work on his agility. Uh, Nick Ginn, second on the team with 59 tackles. He stepped up big time, getting a starting role out of strong safety. Uh, he had six tackles for loss. Then there's Kyle Butler. The Butler did it. 55 tackles on the year, 27 TFLs, 12 sacks, just a dominant player, the best pass rusher in school history. Uh, he finishes his career with 43 sacks in four seasons. Look at the tackles for loss, 88 tackles for loss in four seasons here at A&M. He's forced five fumbles. Um, you know, talk about a dominant player. Two seasons, he was the Lombardi uh, Award winner. You know, he set the bar for defensive ends in this uh, in this program. And, uh, you know, he's sore. He's going to be missed so bad, bro. That defensive line is not going to be the same without him. Uh, Dustin Carey, we moved him to free safety this year. Great job for him, 54 tackles. Uh, he did have an interception. Uh, again, you know, he's learning this position. He's doing a great job. He can cover man, cover zone. He did get burnt a couple plays, man. But for the most part, he did a solid job for us. Now, this guy is interesting, man. Jason Harris at corner. He had 53 tackles on the year, two TFLs. Uh, I expected a lot out of Jason this year, a lot. And I, and I can say that I was very disappointed. Um, you know, he was going to be corner number one for us. As he was coming in for his junior year, he was going to lead the secondary. And I felt like every time there was a play, every time there was a pass his way, he just wasn't making plays. Uh, he finished with 52 tackles, three picks. He had a pick six. He deflected nine balls. I mean, the stats look great. But if you go back and watch the film, he was getting routed up left and right. Uh, he eventually lost his starting job to Bill Jennings. We kicked him back inside to play nickel, uh, which was a great – was a solid play for us. Um, but, again, when you have a guy who's got – like, the traits are just ridiculous, man. 98 man, 98 zone, 99 press, 96 play rec, 99 awareness. You're expecting him to play like that. And this year, he really did not play like that. Now, somebody who did play very well for us was Matt Scott, 46 tackles on the year, two TFLs. Uh, I believe he had six interceptions, three pass deflections. Uh, you know, Matt stepped up. Matt really stepped up this year. He took over that cornerback number one spot. And he led the secondary. Um, you know, we're expecting him back next season. Uh, and I think that he can show why he should be an All-American and be up for awards going into his uh, senior year. With Jason Harris going towards the – with Jason Harris going to the bench, that gave uh, Bill Jennings a chance to get some playing time, and he stepped up big time. 45 tackles on the year. He also had six interceptions. He had a pick six. Deflected four balls. Uh, Bill is is very small, 5'10", 184. He's not the biggest corner, but he plays so much above his uh, height and weight. He could come down and make a tackle. 
Uh, he's not afraid to go up with tall receivers and make a play. Uh, I think Bill is going to uh, earn himself some money next year uh, when he comes back for his junior year. Teams really tried to pick on him, and he made him pay for it. He had two picks in the uh, national championship that sealed the game for us. True, three two, true freshman David Sims finishes uh, his freshman campaign with thirty nine tackles, nine TFLs, uh, two sacks, an interception that went for a touchdown, and he forced a fumble. Uh, this kid's gonna be pushing for playing time next year. I think that we're gonna have to switch up our defense a little bit to make sure he gets on the field a lot more. Uh, he's a playmaker. He's a hard hitter. He has great coverage, great speed. This kid is gonna be something special for the next few seasons here at A and M. And there's the captain, Corey Mark. 33 tackles on the year, uh, 22 TFLs, 15 sacks. Uh, his career comes to an end at a and and what a run it was for the captain, man. Uh, he finished his career with 95 tackles, 48 tackles for loss, 32 sacks in his career. Um, freshman year, he started off with a bang. He came in as a defensive end, and we kicked him inside, uh, and he shined. He shined. Uh, so freshman year, big numbers. Sophomore year kind of took a dip. Junior year went back up, and his senior year he came out smoking. Um, again, him, Kyle Butler are going to be sorely missed on that defensive line. Those two uh, really set the bar for the future of this team. Down the line we go. Chris Johnson finishes with 32 tackles, and you had Corey Bentley with 30. Jermaine Coco with 29. Will Mosby had 26. He started a new role. He's more of a hybrid linebacker safety. Uh, then you have Ben Bowen, uh, the other outside linebacker with 26 tackles, 12 TFLs. Calvin Mullins on the defensive line his senior year finishes with 22 tackles, four sacks. It's another guy we're going to be losing, man. Great pass rush. Uh, great against uh, the run, too. I uh, wish we would have saw a little bit more of him through his career, but uh, glad he was able to get some playing time his senior year. Casey Buchanan, a transfer, he had 15 tackles. James Riley, another safety or another senior that we're losing, uh, a D tackle, 15 tackles or yeah, 15 tackles and two sacks. Jimmy Stewart, another senior defensive tackle, eight tackles and two sacks. Uh, Jonathan Thomas, redshirt freshman, free safety, five tackles. Richie Anderson. Uh, with five tackles, and Jonathan Lamb had five as well. QB pressure department, this team got after the quarterback, man. Corey Mark, 15 sacks. Kyle Butler had 12. Mullins with four. Uh, Caleb Walker, the redshirt freshman, he had two sacks. So did Stewart, Riley, Bentley, Johnson, and Sims. Jones finished with one sack. So did Jonathan Lamb. Uh, Kyle Wilson had a sack. Bill Jennings had a sack as well. And we forced a lot of interceptions. Matt Scott, Bill Jennings, each with six. Coco and Harris had three. Then he had Kerry Anderson, uh, Sims, Buchanan, Mosby, and Jones, each with one. And we have five defensive touchdowns. Jason Harris led the way with one. Buchanan had one. Jennings had one. Sims and Mark had one as well. To the kicking game, Keaton Holt, our sophomore kicker, man, five of five this year. 100% his long was 50. He was perfect on extra points. Honestly, I want to start kicking a lot more field goals. Uh, we, we scored a lot of touchdowns. He had 111 extra points. That's crazy to think about. Uh, but I would love to start kicking more field goals. Keaton has such a strong leg, and uh, he's getting more accurate as the as he continues his growth here at AM. Uh, he's a good weapon to have. Same in the punt game. Jacob Williamson, nine punts, 415 yards. He averaged 36 yards per kick. Uh, you know, in those fourth and long situations, I got to punt more uh, instead of going for it. But he does a great job pinning guys back, too. He had four punts inside the 20. I don't care what anybody says. We have the best return man in the country. Tariq Larson, uh, kickoff return specialist, 59 returns for 1,879 yards and two touchdowns, including one uh, record-breaking kickoff return in the national championship that went 108 yards back to the house. Uh, in the punt game, equally as dangerous, 34 returns for 540 and a touchdown. Uh, you know, going into his senior year, he's going to be playing a lot more in the slot. So I'm not sure if he's going to be on special teams next year. We'll have to wait and see because we've got somebody, again, that's coming off a red shirt that is going to be a stud in the return game. So here's something that we normally don't do, man. Here's a look at the school records. 
And as you can see, Randy Thomas II still has his name etched everywhere in this uh, record book. Uh, career for touchdowns is 69. Uh, passing game, passing touchdowns in the game is seven. He still has it. Uh, Craig Washington in the season has 38 touchdowns. I'm sure he's going to break this um, career passing yards mark at some point. Uh, passing yards in a game, that's T. Rob. He had 652. Uh, and then C. Dub had uh, f- almost 5,000 yards passing in a season. Here's a look at the receiving stats. DJ with 34 touchdowns in his career. Uh, we still haven't broken this record, which is crazy. Uh, three re- three receiving touchdowns in a season. Jones again uh, receiving touchdowns in a season with 13. In a career, he had 3,721 yards. In a game, we still haven't broken that one yet. Uh, a receiver from 2008 had 245 yards. Jones in the season with almost 1,500 yards receiving. 268 catches for his career. Uh, we got to break this one, too. 14 catches in a career or in a game, excuse me. And Jones had 103 catches in a season. I think if Trey Morgan comes back for his senior year, he's going to break uh, the reception season or the reception uh, in a career. He should be getting close to that. Uh, and I think we can get him the receiving touchdowns in a season. To the defense side of the ball, we go real quick. Interceptions, we haven't even touched those yet. Not even close. Uh, but in the sack game, uh, Kyle Butler, 43 sacks in his career. Corey Mark, five sacks in the game and 15 sacks in the season. And here we go with the rushing. Corey Gonzalez, I mean, what can we say? He was the best player ever at Arkansas A&M. 85 total career touchdowns. Ira Harris has the most rushing touchdowns in the game with five. Gonzalez in a season, 28 touchdowns. Career rushing yards, 6,092 for CGZ. Uh, rushing yards in the game, uh, 293. We should be getting close to that. And then Corey Gonzalez uh, for rushing yards in the season, 2,150. Now, here's a look at the stats for this college football season. As you can see, Craig Washington just dominated through the air. He threw almost a th- he threw over 1,000 more than what Green did at Cincinnati. Uh, on the ground, Ira finished 46, man. A lot of good running backs this year. Uh, the co- running back from Toledo almost went for 2,000 yards. In yards, Trey Morgan finishes ninth with 1,260 tackles. Shocker, A&M, running it all over this board, man. Quarterback sacks, you got Corey Mark finishes first. Lundy from Wyoming is second, and then Kyle Butler is third. And then in the interceptions department, Matt Scott finishes 11th, probably tied with Bill Jennings with six picks. So here's a look at your All-American list, led by Craig Washington at quarterback. This man won every award but the Heisman Trophy Award, and he's the he gets a first-team All-American nom. He's the only player that we have on offense, but a lot of defensive players this year. Kyle Butler at defensive end, Corey Mark at D tackle, Brian Jones at middle linebacker. Then you got Matt Scott and Bill Jennings at corner. Uh, and then in the kick return game, you've got Tariq Larson. On the second team, Ira Harris gets a All-American nom. So does right tackle Curtis Maynard. Defense side of the ball, Jason Harris at corner, which is a shocker. And here's your first team all-freshman list. Uh, you got Drew White at left guard, David Sims at outside linebacker. Here's your all Big 12 list, Craig Washington, Ira Harris, Philip Fagan. Uh, you've got Keith Smith, Curtis Maynard. You've got Kyle Butler, Calvin Mullins, Corey Mark, James Riley, Brian Jones, David Sims, Matt Scott, Bill Jennings, uh, Nick Ginn, Jacob Williamson, and Tariq Larson all in the first team. I'm shocked that our guy, man, Trey Morgan, didn't make it over Jay Williams and Morales, but that's okay. I think he got second team. Yo, he didn't even get second team. Wow. Are you serious? That's crazy. Will Johnson gets second team. So does Will Rogers. Uh, Will Horn. A lot of Wills right there. Three Wills. Um, That's crazy. Bentley, Stewart, Harris, Coco, Carey. And Holt, all second team, all Big 12. No Trey Morgan. So here's a look at the final standings after this season, man. And as you can see, our Black Bears move up to a six-star prestige school. It's been a long time coming, man. Think about it. This is seven seasons, and we finally get the six-star prestige. Uh, We finish as the number one team in the country, get all 61 votes. Notre Dame is two. Michigan State is three. 
Bama falls two spots to four. Tulsa up six spots to five. They had a really good season, 11-3. Arizona, uh, they're in at six. Uh, Washington is seven. Michigan is eight. NC State is nine. And Florida State rounds out your top ten. You've got Stanford, Fresno State, Miami of Ohio, excuse me, Florida, Georgia, BYU, Ole Miss, Texas creeps back into the top 25 at 18. Uh, Tulane is 19. Wisconsin's 20. UCLA falls 12 spots to 21. Uh, San, Diego, San Diego State is 22. Pittsburgh is 23. Auburn in at 24. And Oklahoma rounds out your top 25. So like I said, kind of a bogus way to end the season for Craig Washington. Finished second for uh, the Heisman Trophy behind Ben Cohen from Michigan. Again, I think it was because of the Big 12 championship game where he threw, I think it was like three picks. Um, but again, I'm hoping that Craig comes back for his junior year and we can run it back. Uh, he deserves to win the Heisman. He won every award this year and got first team All-American, but did not get the Heisman. And as you see, Ira Harris finished fifth on this list, which is interesting because he was a utility player uh, after, uh, what, the middle of the season? And talking about awards, Craig won the Maxwell Award, the Walter Camp Award. Ira Harris finished second. Uh, the Ben Nerick goes to Brian Jones. Corey Mark finished third or second, excuse me. And Matt Scott was fourth. Uh, Mark also won the Nagurski. And Brian Jones finished fifth. Uh, the O'Brien Award goes to Craig Washington. The Walker Award goes to Terrence Nolan uh, from Pitt. Ira Harris finished second. The Bolitnikoff, uh, Zach Parker from Miami of Ohio takes it. Trey Morgan finished third. Will Johnson was fifth. Uh, Jay Williams from A State, he was second. The Mackey goes to Alfred Jude, a tight end from Wisconsin. The Outland goes to Matt Keys from Bama. The Remington goes to Donovan Bradford from Bama. So two big offensive linemen from Alabama walking away with awards. Uh, then Lombardi goes to Kyle Butler, uh, but his teammate, Corey Mark, finished second. Brian Jones was best linebacker. The Thorpe Award goes to Troy Oliver, the free safety from Alabama. Second was David Ryan from Southern Miss. Uh, Ryan Tucker uh, from Miami of Ohio finished third, and then Matt Scott is fourth. The Groza goes to Tyrell Wilson, the freshman kicker from Washington. Uh Travis Adams, the kicker, the punter from Stanford, wins the Ray Guy Award. Look at that. Jacob Williamson was third. And then best returner goes to Tariq Larson. So the Bears racked up awards this year, and none bigger than that, that national championship, baby. This team was amazing. But it's time for us to start looking towards the future. Uh, this senior class, we're losing 10 players, man. 10 players in this senior class. But this recruiting class we are bringing in is going to be probably one of the biggest uh, name-wise recruiting classes we've ever had on campus. Uh, we've already got a lot of commits, and we've got a lot of big names still left on the board. We're going to kick things off with Dominic Foreman at wide receiver. His cousin is Fred Foreman, already on the A&M roster. He's coming in as a four-star prospect, 6'1", 204 at wide receiver from South Carolina. Uh, again, we're losing two wide receivers this year, and we're just looking to keep that uh, receiving group up. Dominic is going to be nice, man. He's going to be a great possession receiver for us, great route runner, great spec catch and release. Uh, I'm already comparing him to Trey Morgan. He has a lot of Trey Morgan in him, not the fastest, but he can run great routes, and he can get off of jams, and he's got a great pair of hands. Uh, we're losing 3D tackles, so we had to bring some in. This is Bryson Williams. From Illinois, 6'5", 300 pounds, four-star prospect. Uh, he's going to be a hole plugger. Hole plugger. 84 strength, 86 tackles, 78 power move. Uh, we're excited to get him in and see what he can do. He is going to be, hands down, a part of one of the greatest defensive tackle groups coming in to this school's history. We're bringing in a new outside linebacker as well, Kyle Wright from Hawaii, 6'3", 224. The number four outside linebacker in this class, uh, and he's just a tackling machine. 82 speed, 87 tackling, 81 play rec, uh, 75 block shed. He's leaving the islands, man, to come and hang out in Arkansas. How crazy is that? But I think the player that everybody is most excited about in this class 
is Mike Warren, the six foot, two hundred five pound wide receiver from Lufkin, Texas. Our first five star prospect in school history, and this kid is going to be amazing. Ninety three speed, ninety five acceleration, great hands, great route running. Uh, he's a great return man. Uh, in high school, he did it all. He was played in the backfield. He played in the slot. He played outside. Kick return, punt return. This dude is going to be a utility knife uh, for this offense and for the special teams. I expect to see him play a lot of get, get a lot of playing time his freshman year. Here's another D tackle that we're bringing in, and he's staying at home. Paul Wilson from Camden, Arkansas, four star prospect, the number seven defensive tackle in this class. And again, we've got we have a great group coming in, guys. Uh, he can get off of blocks, great power move, great finesse move, great block shedding. He can tackle, great play rec. I, I think he could start day one. I think he could start day one for us. We're bringing in more depth on that offensive line. This is Patrick Gray from Mississippi, 6'3", 340, excuse me, the number 130 guard in this class. Again, just a depth player. Um, you know, he's going to be able to help out the offensive line uh, if, some, if somebody gets hurt. He's more of a project, so I think we should put the red shirt on him next season. You know, Coach Thomas loves his running backs, and he got another one, man. This kid's going to be special, too. Corey Green from Colorado, 6'1", 207, the number 23 back in this class. Um, a lot of Corey Gonzalez comparisons already. Great speed, great agility, can break tackles. Uh, he's very elusive for his size. We're, we don't have to be concerned with his fumbling. The only thing he can't do is catch out of the backfield. Uh, but I think – He's going to be best off with a red shirt this season. Uh, kind of build him up a little bit. He's going to be behind, you know, three running backs that are going to be searching for playing time. Anthony Bryant, Philip Fagan, Ira Harris. So uh, we're going to have a loaded backfield, but that's a good problem to have. And if the offense wasn't explosive enough, we had to go find a tight end. This is Ashton Ryan from Texas, 6'2", 239, four-star prospect. And already – Already, you've got scouts comparing him to David Jones. He's faster than DJ. Might have better hands. He can block. Great route runner. He's going to run you over. He's going to throw a stiff farm. He's elusive for his size. This dude is going to be a weapon. Now, is he going to start day one? I don't know. But he might. <laughs> Here's another receiver, Curtis Larkin from Georgia, six foot 191. He's a possession receiver, 82 in this class. Uh, more of a project again, 92 speed, great route running, uh, red shirt because he cannot catch to save his life. Um, so put the red shirt on him. If he pans out, he pans out. If he doesn't, you know, we could release him or he can, you know, enter the, tra the transfer portal. We got an interesting athlete here. This is Luke Baker from West Virginia, 6'4", 241, a four-star prospect, the number 20 ranked athlete in this class. And, there's nothing that really jumps off the page. Uh, I think he could play tight end. 89 speed, 79 agility, 73 catching, 76 route running. Uh, he has some running back traits uh, with the elusiveness, the break tackle. Um, I'm interested to see what we can do with him. Uh, he might be able to play something on defense, but not really because he's got 59 tackle. Uh, so he might play tight end or he might play fullback. Here's more offensive line help. Jeff Williams from Mississippi, 6'7", 264, three-star prospect. Again, just adding a little bit more depth to this offensive line. 79 pass block, 82 impact block. Another center, this is Byron Smith, the number two center right from right here in Arkansas, 6'1", 294. We are stacked at the center position. We got the number one center last season. Now we get the number two center uh, in this year's recruiting class. Uh, again, solid traits across the board. I wonder if he could play anywhere else on that offensive line. I just don't want him sitting there uh, because that might open him up for a transfer. I think our secondary needs a lot of help, and we're looking to add more uh, corners, more people who come in and cover. This is Brian Smith from South Carolina, six foot one ninety one, the number six corner in this class, and you know, great speed, ninety five speed, very agile, great play rec, more of a zone coverage corner than he is a man cover. Uh, great press too. a lot of comparisons already to Richard Sherman when he was in college. So that's a good comparison to have. Uh, he doesn't have the size, though, but he does have the coverage ability. Again, we're losing a lot of defensive tackles, three defensive tackles gone this year. 
Uh, looking to bring in more depth. This is Sam Hendricks from Vermont, 6'3", 259, a three-star prospect. Number 25 D tackle in this class. Great power move. Uh, solid block shed, great strength. Uh, again, you know, just adding more depth. He could get the red shirt uh, and continue to grow as a player. And I think in a couple years, he could be very dominant for us. Here's some more help at corner. This is Corey for Warda, 6'181 from Kentucky. His cousin, Chris, played for Grambling State a few years back, uh, the number 29 corner in this class. And again, great speed, 92 speed, 92 agility, 84 man coverage, 82 zone, 65 press. Uh, we're going to redshirt him, uh, allow him to grow into the position a little bit more. And I think in his sophomore campaign, his sophomore year, junior year, we could be looking at somebody who's going to be in the high 80s, low 90s. We signed a JUCO transfer guard. This is junior Charles Stevens from Manchester, Tennessee, 6'4", 317. Uh, my thinking behind bringing him in is moving him to left tackle. Great pass blocker, 85 pass block, 90 strength. Uh, the run running solid. The impact block is solid as well. Uh, Will Horn was a great is a great player, but we had a lot of pressure coming off that edge. And if we could put Stevens on the outside to play left tackle with that 71 speed, he should be able to keep up with most defensive ends. And the final player that has already signed his letter of intent, this is Leon Hester from right here in Arkansas. D tackle, the number eight D tackle in this class, four star prospect, six four two eighty four. And like I said, we have a great group of defensive tackles, defensive linemen that are coming in. Uh, 85 power move, 80 block shed, 81 tackle. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of rotating on this defensive line next season. And a lot of these true freshmen are going to see a lot of playing time. So to the top of the board, we go. We've got some interesting races going on here. This is Ernest Carroll from Florida, the number two defensive tackle in this class, five-star prospect. Um, 6'2", 297. Right now, he's got North Texas, Bama uh, ahead of us. Uh, I'm thinking about taking him off the board. I'm going to be honest with you. I like the D tackles that we already have here, uh, that we've already recruited. Now, this kid, he's something special. 87 tackling, uh, great pursuit, great play rec, great power move. But compared to the other guys, I feel like the other guys do a lot more. I feel like uh, the other guys do a lot more. Now, Carroll's going to be a great player. Uh, I'm sure of it, but I just I don't want to have too many big star freshmen uh, just sitting there or having to be rotated in. Um, so it's something we could talk about during the offseason. And I'm sure Coach Thomas and the, and the coaching staff have already talked about it. One guy that I do want to get, and I just don't know if it's going to be possible, is Chad Samuel uh, from Florida, the number two free safety in this class, 6'2", 201. Uh, this guy is Nick Ginn, 2.0. Great speed and acceleration. Will lay the hat. Great tackler. Uh, the coverage ability still needs some work, but, man, he's a very athletic player. We are trailing behind Alabama and Georgia right now, and that lead is that's going to be a tough one. That's going to be a tough one to, to make up. Uh, since we're losing Kyle Butler this year at defensive end, I wanted to replace him with somebody that could come in and, you know, Maybe take over. This is John Barnes from Florida, 6'2", 248, the number three defensive end in the class, five-star prospect. And, again, I, I think this kid could come in and he could be one of those guys, man. Uh, 78 speed, great power move. The finesse move is solid. Block shedding is there. He could tackle, great hit power. Uh, he's not as fast as Kyle, but he has some great traits to play defensive end. Here's another guy who could come in and get some playing time early, too. Tommy Washington from Utah, 6'4", 240, three-star uh, defensive end, number nine, number 35 in this class. And right now we have a lead over Pitt, and this guy, he has the speed, 80 speed, 89 acceleration. Uh, the power move and finesse move and block shedding are solid. Great hit power, great pursuit. You know, you can't go wrong with either one of these guys. We're going to have to make a decision, though, because – uh, we got to get at least one of them. So if we decide not to go after Carroll, there is John Schroeder from Mississippi, 6'2", 259, three-star prospect. Uh, you know, he doesn't have the Carroll traits, but he's still solid, man, and he's going to add more depth to that already great defensive line room. Um, you know, he's more of a project that could get a red shirt, and again, if something happens, somebody were to get hurt, he could step in and get some playing time. 
Now, this is a kid I'm very interested in. This is Victor Morse from Florida. He's a wide receiver, 6'5", 196, three-star prospect, the number 128th wide receiver in this class. Now, when you see his traits, you're going to be like, see, what are you thinking? He's got 86 speed, 73 agility, 75 acceleration, uh, 83 jumping. Catching needs some work. He, he doesn't have the greatest hands. Solid route running, okay spec catch, and his release needs some work too. This kid's a project. And when you have somebody that's 6'5", 196, and that has 86 speed, you kind of have to take a look at him, man. Um, you know, I think with a red shirt, get him in here, get him trained up, have him learn the system. I think this guy could be a player for us somewhere down the road. I really do. Um, you know, I'm going to put some points into him. We've got a lead over Bama, Notre Dame, with West Virginia, and Oklahoma. I think those big schools are seeing everything that I'm seeing as well. He is a blank canvas. He's a basketball player turned football player, and he's just athletic. We might be able to get him in here and turn him into a star by the time he graduates. As you can see, Coach Thomas is doing a great job recruiting, man. The number one recru recruiting class in the country right now, 17 prospects already signed with eight more to go here in the offseason. You got Minnesota in at two. Clemson is three. Look at Washington. The Huskies are just reloading. Three five-star players, four four-stars, and ten three-stars. Ohio State is five. Florida is six. Bama in at seven. Pittsburgh is eight. Notre Dame is nine, and then Auburn rounds out your top ten. So, fellas, we had some time to celebrate, but now it's time to go back to work. Saturday is the off-season live stream. Uh, I'm looking forward to this off-season, man. I know we have a lot of guys coming back for next season uh, to run it back, but we are also losing a lot of key players uh, to graduation. So it's going to be interesting to see how we're able to retool this uh, team uh, a lot, like I said, a lot of the key players on offense will be back. Our entire offensive line will be back. But you're losing stars like Kyle Butler, Corey Mark, uh, Will Johnson, Richie Carroll. Um, and then you still have the guys who might decide to declare early. Craig Washington, Ira Harris, Trey Morgan, Jason Harris. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how Coach Thomas can keep this team together and try to make another run at another national championship, man. But right now, we're going to keep celebrating. We got our first Natty. The off-season live stream, again, will be this Saturday. I will hit the community tab or Discord to let you guys know what time. So make sure you guys check those out. And I appreciate you guys watching this, man. It's been a fun year. It's been an amazing season. And we're going to keep going up from here, man. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you smash that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you're brand new. Don't forget to ring that bell. Join the Noti Squad. And make sure you guys hit those links down in my description. Follow your boy on Facebook, Twitter, and IG. And come through and join the Discord fam for exclusive content. And we'll talk from the off-season live stream this Saturday. Have a great day, guys. Two fingers in the air. Peace.